Well, good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. Today is 26 July 2020, and we are in a new series of six sessions about the church. We are joined together. So when we accept Christ, uh, we also become part of the body of Christ, which is the church. We are social creatures, and we want to be part of, of different groups. And it may be your family or your friends, a social network, but the church is a family, and it is the body of Christ. And being part of Christ's body is not an option. So being part of the church is not an option. God designed us to live and serve together as His body, the church. That's why He has joined us together. Paul uh, spent about three years in the city of Ephesus, and he was writing to the churches there now, and uh, he was a church planner, and he wrote many letters uh, to the churches that he had been a part in, and so we're going to look at what he had to say to these churches there in Ephesus. Let's pray. Our Lord and God, we again thank you that we can come to you, that we can look into your word, Lord. And we ask the Holy Spirit to show us the things that you want us to learn, Lord. And may we respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit and understand more about how to be a member of a church and, of course, of the body of Christ. And I pray this in the name of your Son and my Savior. Well, Paul was writing to the Ephesian church and in chapter 1, in verses 20 through 23, he was talking, he was writing about what God had done through his son. He starts out by saying, he exercised God. He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of of one who fills all things in every way. We are the body of Christ. And Paul used this throughout several books that he, he wrote to the different churches, saying that God had raised his son, Jesus, from the dead, and that the resurrection was central in our faith, and that God had placed him at his right hand, and he is there now interceding for us in heaven with God. He is enthroned, and... Uh, the risen Christ was both in the presence of God and is right now, and he is with us 
his followers. So we are to affirm uh, that Christ's presence is with us all the time in, in the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Paul was saying that Christ is superior to every kind of spiritual being. And he is also supreme over every ruler, all authority and power and dominion, and also over every title given. He is the all in all. He was there and part of the creation of the world. And he conquered all of the spiritual beings that was opposed to God during when he defeated them in Colossians 2, 15. And Paul reminded us and them that we are in a spiritual war with evil forces in Ephesians 6, 12. So he is at the right hand of God interceding for us. He reigns now and in the future. And that is in God's word and uh, he can't lie. So uh, Christ is supreme in this age and in the one to come. So God raised Jesus from the dead and thereafter seated him at his right hand in a place of ultimate authority over every ruler. God gave Jesus an eternal rule in this age and also in the age to come. God put everything under the authority of Jesus. God appointed Jesus head of the church and God appointed him to fill all things in every way. In other words, everything finds its purpose in our Lord and Savior. Paul went on to say that the church is the body of Christ and that uh, he wanted to highlight unity in the church, in the local church and the universal church and, and the diversity of the human body. We are all somewhat different and we all have skills and special talents that have been given to us to serve in the church and of course in the end to serve God and our Lord and Savior. Paul, as you remember, persecuted the church earlier in his life. We find that in Acts 9.5. He actually not only persecuted us, but God himself, our Lord and Savior, he persecuted. But Paul was changed. He had the radical change that comes when we accept our Lord and Savior as God himself, the Savior of the world. So after we're saved, we should recognize the need for us to be part of the church. And we are important parts of the body 
of the church. And we need to be involved in the church activities. So God, through his son, is the one that fulfills us, that gives us the skills and the talents to do his work. And today we hope that we can re recapture uh, a vital understanding of the church today. <clears throat> When we come to Christ, again, we also become a part of the body of Christ. And the next scripture here is from Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. And more than likely, you have heard this all your life. It says, For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. The basis of the church, both universal and local, is our salvation. Ephesians 1, 7 and 8. And in Ephesians, in Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, Paul talks about the nature of our salvation and the relationship of our salvation to our experience in Christ. We remember that there is a radical transformation when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We were before spiritually dead because of our sins in Ephesians 2.1. But in verse 5, salvation offered by God and initiated by God made us alive when we responded to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Salvation in Christ is the bedrock for being a member of the church. And it is based on God's grace. God gave, uh, gave us the first move of his free gift of grace. And we learned that God is love, as in 1 John 4, verse 8 and verse 16. God provides salvation to sinners by the sacrificial death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. So God gave us the divine initiative in salvation through his grace. And our response to him is faith. So Paul showed us that faith is trust and our commitment to our Lord and Savior. There is not anything that we can do to save ourselves. We can't buy it, we can't earn it, we can't work for it. It is a gift from God, and He is the author and the source of our salvation by sending His Son to shed His blood for us and then resurrecting Him from the dead. <clears throat> so salvation is based on our faith in Christ, not on our works and not on works from the Old Testament about the Jewish law. That's in Galatians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. And we live in a self-centered world, 
And so that's why it is hard for many people to not understand the calling of the Holy Spirit to be saved. If we boast at all, it should be a God-centered boast. As in 1 Corinthians 1, 31. So, to summarize that, we are saved by grace through faith. And every aspect of our salvation is God's gift to us, not by any work that we may have done. So grace is God's unmerited favor. We didn't do anything for it. He, he loved us to the point where he was willing to send his son to pay our sin debt. <clears throat> because of this, we should be wanting to do good works. Good deeds should be the natural and normal result of salvation. And we turn out to be His workmanship, created for a purpose, and we honor God through our good deeds. We should be eager to do these good works, as in Titus 2.14. And good deeds are a crucial part of being saved. We are to honor God through our service to Him and other, other people our fellow members in our local church and also to the universal church. Paul goes on in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, and says this, So then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints, and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole building being put together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together for God's dwelling in the Spirit. So we are to be united in the church because of our common faith in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So we have this common interest and we need to pursue it and share it with others. Our salvation in Christ brings together those that have come to our Lord and Savior. Jesus is not merely a hero or a role model or an inspiring personality. Our common salvation by grace through faith in Christ should impact our social relationships. So, at that time, they had Jews and Gentiles, and they were not happy with each other. But salvation brought them together, both Jews and, and the Gentiles, through the blood of our Lord and Savior, and they started to work together for the cause of Christ in His body called the church. <clears throat> so they were no longer foreigners and wayfaring strangers. We are all 
that are saved, citizens of heaven. Paul, Paul says here, citizens of the saints. We are not super Christians, but we, in our unity, can spread the gospel. So we are all saints, but not super Christians. Paul called the people that he was writing to there in Ephesus the faithful saints in Christ in Ephesians 1.1. And he went on to say that we were part of God's household. Today we often refer to the church as our family. We call each other brothers and sisters. Uh, as in Hebrews 3, 6, uh, refers to the church as Christ's household. At that time, most of the churches that had been started were meeting in homes. And even then, of course, homes had a foundation. Our church has a foundation both local and universal in the apostles and the prophets. We find that in 1 Corinthians 3.11. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is part of the foundation and he is the cornerstone of the foundation. <clears throat> Each of the apostles and the prophets had an assignment from God, just like we have that same thing in the gift of grace and the gift of the skills and the talents that we have for serving Him. <clears throat> he is the cornerstone, and we are the living stones that serve him through the talents that we got when we were saved through the Holy Spirit. So the old songs say that we are working on a building and it is a holy temple uh, in the Lord. So, we are, in effect, the temple of the living God. We, in our body, are the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians six nineteen. Paul stressed unification in the church. He saw the Jews and the Gentiles start to work together because of their faith in Christ. <clears throat> we also, during this time, call our church God's house here at Westside, but that is just a figure of speech. God is a spirit as we find out uh, when Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 and verse 24. God dwells with and he is in his people. All of us that know him as our Savior, he is with us. So how do we do this? How do we embrace your role as a member of Christ in his body, in his church? Well, if you have the right mindset or the right attitude, uh, we need to use our skills to serve him and to share the gospel message. And if we don't have the right attitude, 
we need to confess that and change that and start working and sharing and helping other people. We need to submit to him by reading Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 through 23 that reflect on the power and authority of our Lord and Savior. We need to submit to that and begin to work for him, not because we have to, but because we love him and we want to serve him and we want to worship him. And then there are folks that are not a member uh, of a church and you need to pursue that and become part uh, of, of God's work and we do that through the work of the church and uh, through the mission of the church to reach those that are not saved. God's grace can help us embrace a healthy view of our role in Christ's church. Make a conscious decision to commit to God's view of his church rather than a human approach. God bless his church. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the church and allowing us to be part of the body of Christ. Help us, Lord, to share the primary message of the gospel, the resurrection of Jesus and the salvation by grace through faith in him. As believers, we are to be part of the church. Lord, as you lead us, help us to use the skills and the talents that you have given us for your work to be done. Lord, we pray that we would follow the lead of the Holy Spirit and that we would respond to, to him. And Lord, we would be part of the membership of our church here, Westside Baptist Church, and part of the universal church all over the world. We ask that you would guide us, and I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and my Savior. Amen. <laughs>